is off. Yeah. Yes guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be explaining the macro times and I'm going to get straight into a full trade breakdown of one of the trades we took this week. I can't lie to you guys, this week's price action which just passed us was not the cleanest price action and we only closed out. It was a very small week, we still closed out on a profit of course, but it was only a 25 handle gain on the week. I mean it was a small week but we still closed out on top, we had risk management. And we had good patience in price action. Some days we didn't even trade, but we got through the week. Weeks like that, you just want to be patient. A lot of people blow their accounts on, on stagnant weeks when price action isn't offering. And they're like, ah, oh, right, let's go straight in. Let's, let's just take this poor setup. No, we only took A plus setups and we came out on top. So let's get into the first slide quickly. All right, so explaining the macro times. There's only one macro time, which we mainly trade. So we do not really trade the London macro. It doesn't tend to have the most amount of volatility and high probability price action so we trade the New York AM macro it runs from 9 50 a.m. which is 20 minutes after the open until 10 10 a.m. and then there's a second macro in the a.m. which we trade as well which is the 10 50 a.m. to 11 10 a.m. and if we don't get a setup in both of their macros and we have no trades we've taken no trades so far then we we'll take a look at the p.m. session the p.m. session macro runs from 1 45 p.m. to 2 45 p.m. usually if the whole of the a.m. session contains poor price action you can expect a pretty decent move during the afternoon session or even the last hour macro which is literally as it is the last hour of the the trading session which is 3 p.m to 4 p.m however we never usually tend to trade that we usually get a clean setup during the a.m session if you catch a winning trade in the morning that's it you're done for the day close your laptop and enjoy your day if you're not satisfied without the amount of money you've made off a profitable trade during the a.m session then i don't think you have enough capital behind you because any sort of w you should be closing your laptop satisfied with the amount of money you've made on the day and getting on with other stuff if you to take a loss in the morning then you can 100% then look at the p.m. session or the second macro at 10 50 11 10 with half position size so if you lose your first trade then you come back with your second trade of half position size you continue with half position size until you catch a winning trade so as it states here we do not trade the New York lunch from 12 p.m. to 1 30 p.m. so I'm just gonna tell you now when you enter a trade at 9 50 10 10 if your trade is not here some sort of stop loss or first TP or final TP TP. If it hasn't hit final TP by the time of 12 p.m., which is New York lunch, you want to close out where you are. It doesn't matter if you're running just below second TP. It doesn't matter whereabouts you are. If you're not here, any sort of take profit or stop loss by 12 p.m., you want to close out all of your positions. Usually between New York lunch, we get a run on stops, which basically means, say the AM session was a move higher, then you can expect a run on stops between the 12 p.m. lunch, so create a lunch high, and then it would run on stops and create a lunch low. Low. Then, during the PM session, you use the lunch highs and the lunch lows, and you mark them out as buy side and sell side liquidity. You look for these levels to get swept, and then you can target the opposing liquidity. Now I've explained the macro times, I hope I've made it clear to you guys. I'm going to get into a full breakdown trade of one of the trades we took this week. It wasn't producing loads and loads of TPs, but I'm going to be transparent and clear of what one of the trades actually looked like this week. So let's get straight into this. Alright, so without wasting anyone's time, we're getting straight into this breakdown trade this is the trade we took on the 16th of may on thursday so we only caught around 25 handles on this trade but this is a realistic example of one of the trades we took this week i'm not trying to sugarcoat a final tp this week wasn't the cleanest price action going into this session i marked out london highs london lows and i marked out some other buy side and sell side liquidity which i looked to get swept so we had this was actually cpi day and we had news at 8 30 so obviously cpi Okay, so now we've marked out the key levels of sell side liquidity. Basically, you can see at 8.30 CPI came out and it swept the London highs. So it manipulated above London highs, swept it, and then the real move happened where it dumped. So now we're coming up to the open of the New York session. I'm just going to fast forward price action a little bit. So 
we can see what it's reaching for prior to the macro of 9.50.10.10. So dropping down to the lower time frame, currently on the one minute time frame, this is where this is the time frame we look for executions. So the fact that CPI came out and it swept London highs as the manipulation play, the ideal trade I would look to take today is a retrace back into a premium, trade back into this five minute bearish gap, which is here on the five minute time frame, and then a unicorn setup to go short to then target this first sell side liquidity and this one here at a 50% retracement of the entire move higher. So you're going to mark this level out here as minor buy side liquidity. And then on the five minute time frame, we have a five minute bearish gap resting above it. So now let's fast forward price action to see what we get coming into the macro of 9.50.10.10. I said whilst on the live stream, I said if we see a sweep of this sell side liquidity down here, I wouldn't be too interested in taking a trade long because we're not actually in a discount yet. So the only trade I'd look to take today would be a sweep of this minor buy side or this previous swing high from CPI. And now we've retraced into a premium. We've just tapped into that five minute bearish and then we'd looked for price to create a swing low, then sweep this swing high, which it created. Then we can look for a displacement lower prior to the macro. So the macro ends at 10.10. So we're gonna look for an entry between this time window. If we do not get an entry, even if it's at 10.12 or 10.13, we're not gonna be entering any positions. You must be very strict when it comes to your executions because in the long run if you don't stick to your plan and you're not disciplined trader and you don't have good risk management in the long run you're going to end up blowing all your accounts and struggle finding profitability in the markets okay so as you can see price then created a previous swing low which we can then mark that out as a displacement level and it also created a unicorn setup so a unicorn setup would then confirm once price then displaces back below this level here i like to mark it out my chart prior just to keep me aware of what price action is currently doing so i mark out using a trend line and then you hold down the shift button and it will make it go flat no we don't use trend lines i'm just using it to mark out previous swing high and then you can mark it out as a unicorn Unicorn setup. A unicorn setup is not a pattern based setup, it's a liquidity based setup. So basically, price then comes up, sweeps this minor buy side. Anyone who entered short at this level and ran their stop at the highs, price then came back up, taken these stops again, and then the real move happened where it displaces lower and offers us a fair value gap for our entry. And then we can obviously ride this all the way to the low. So let's see what we get. So as you can see, price then created another previous swing low, which we're going to move our displacement level to. And then it created another swing high and it swept that swing high again. So as you can see here, it's a very clear power of free setup, which ICT explains on his channel. It's when it sweeps buy side once, sweeps it again, and then sweeps it again. So that's the power of free. And then you'd look for a displacement on the third move. And that's an extremely high probability trade setup. So a lot of you guys would have missed this trade, but I somehow spotted this bearish Fair Valley gap and I've seen that I was offering an extremely low risk to reward. So there's a very tiny one minute bearish Fair Valley gap after we've displaced through this previous swing low. So it's now a displacement lower inside of the macro and there's a tiny one minute bearish Fair Valley gap for our entry. So let me just label this on the chart for you guys to see because it is extremely small. Usually we wouldn't take a bearish Fair Valley gap this small. However, we only risked 7.5 handles on this trade that was it so we entered short of a tap on this bearish Ferraliga and we ran a 7.5 handle stop and our final TP was at these lows here targeting 71 handles our first TP we ran at 25 handles which is at this level here and then our second TP was at sell side liquidity at this level and our final TP at the lows so first TP we closed around 50 to 60 percent of our position and we then continue to move our stops to break even and then we was waiting for second TP and you'll see what happens to price action now whether we got second TP and final TP or not so let's see how this trade plays out go so it's then come back up into this bearish fairly gap it's triggered us short and we're only risking 7.5 handles so if you originally risk one full contract on nq this time you wouldn't be risking 500 dollars on this trade you'd only be risking around 175 to 200 dollars on this trade so extremely low risk that's the only reason we took this trade because it wasn't the clearest displacement
and there you go so price then came down to our first TP at that point we moved our stops to the break even we closed out 50 to 60 percent and then sat there waiting patiently at this point I was already up 7.5k on the day and that's what I'm trying to say to you guys build your capital up and then you'll be satisfied even when you make a small win you're still making some sort of money on the day which is reasonable because if you only have say one 25k account or 150 or a couple 50k accounts but if you slowly build up your capital over the course of six months by the end of a six month period you could build your capital 2 million 3 million 4 million plus in the matter of months but it takes patience good risk management and consistency where can you find consistency in our group or you can study yourself study ICT for months and months six months to eight months and you'll find profitability I promise you, you just have to be patient with it day in and day out and eventually you'll find profitability I promise And there you go, it's as simple as that. So price then came back, stopped us out at break even. And as simple as that, we closed out the day with a 25 handle gain. So we took a, a few winning trades on the week and we took one loss of only around 11 handles. So we ended up closing around 25 to 30 handles in profit on the week. During the course of the summer months, you can expect price action to not be the cleanest. And then towards the end of the year, October, November, December, January, February, and March, you can always expect the cleanest price action week and week out we're closing 300 350 handle plus every single day 100 200 handles profit in a row like because the volatility at the end of the year and the start of the year always tends to offer the best price action but either way even during the summer months we still close out in a profit smashing tps left right and center for the ones who keep messaging me on telegram and instagram asking to join the signals room we're currently not accepting any more members at this current time because our payment processor is currently down but we're working on it and we'll be back up shortly i hope you guys enjoyed this video any questions which you guys have drop them in the comments and if I don't end up replying to you then hop on the live stream inside of our signals room and drop the question inside of the live I'm always answering questions for our members on the live stream we go live every single day on YouTube streaming live yes you can see me execute live and we smash TPs on the live stream it's what we do every single day day in and day out and on that note I'll see you guys in the next video I just did my 39 gotta change my sheet. Shit be rubbing on my body sucking till my knees get weak